We're back. We are back. These are the days podcast and we're on video. For those of you that are still listening loyally on your audio podcast, yeah. you can now watch us. <laughs> I don't think on YouTube as well. Yeah. I don't Finally, think it's anyone been years coming. Takes breaks like we do, but yeah, they it's do. Our, Lots of people take breaks. Not as long as we do. Our breaks have been like we have a lot of children. Like people, our breaks are so <laughs> long. People ask us, "Are you still doing the podcast?" <laughs> Yeah. It isn't like a, a month off or something, but, um, fine. but that actually kind of leads us straight into, I think what we're going to chat about this, this, uh, episode and like what's been going on. What have we, you know, what have we, what have been learning during the break and kind of just a big old catch up and yeah. yeah, with four kids, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely with the fourth kid, it's added an element for sure that, um, yeah, that just wasn't there with three kids, I think, but, um, let's get cruising, babe. Yeah. So since we last chatted with you guys, we have, well, I guess we did our final episode having moved back into our house, but we're officially back in our house. We had Mirabella, our fourth baby in our house, barely moved in in time enough to do that one month before she was born. And we kind of took it slow this summer. We took a break from the podcast. I mean, (laughs) slow in a work sense, obviously we had a baby and we're still, yeah, it's house been projects. anything but slow, but, but, but in the work sense, in we work weren't sense, working yeah. as much. Um, we hosted a lot, which was fun for us because we just haven't been able to do that in the past year of yeah. just living at my parents. And that's something that we really love. So being able to do that and being able to do that in our new kitchen and space yeah. was really cool. And just having lots of gatherings with all the kids being so little outside on the property was super fun. Yep. So we spent a lot of time doing that this summer and uh, took some trips. We did some camping yeah, we t- trips. We took some trips that we didn't share about at all. They were just like secret trips, which is always nice when you share so much of your life on the internet. You get to like, we get to get away sometimes and just not pretend like it doesn't exist, you know? Yep. So that's been good. Um, what else did we do? A reprieve. Yeah. What else did we do? I would say property has been, uh, it really, like when you, when you buy a home, it's so true. Like you don't realize the cost of a home outside of the monetary value. And it's the same with everything, right? Like the cost of a thing is never the actual cost of the thing. It's always mm-hmm. all of the things you don't think about. And, you know, we bought a home a property that just needs it needed work when we bought it we knew that but it needs a lot like right now we literally have the roof getting on because we found a bunch of dry rot under it was leaking and we peeked up under some shingles and it's like all dry rot and stuff so it's just been like endless time remember we told them that remember oh really well remember when we moved back in oh we yeah, saw yeah. The leak been, on our and i don't mean to complain at all i'm just saying like it's true the cost of a thing is never the cost of a thing and yeah. this is like something to teach like kids too is like what you exchange, like when you exchange your money for something, you know, something might cost a price and the market sets that price, but you're not just spending your money. You're going to spend your time, your energy, and emotional all the, capacity, emotional, all of the things associated yeah. with whatever you buy. So for us, that's one been of my a, favorite lines for Jared is I don't have the capacity for that right now. Who was it that was over the other night and was, oh, was um, like, that was great. That's a great line. I'm going to use that. And I didn't realize that that was like kind of just a, yeah, I don't and remember. Us is um, saying, because we say that to each other all the time. You just don't have the capacity right now. Don't yeah. talk to me about that right now. I don't have the capacity. I'm not going to respond the way that you want me to respond. So just therefore, don't bring it up. Yeah. So I would say that's saying, a, so I would say that's a, that's, a, that's one of our like, it's kind of like, hey, not a good time to talk about it right now. But yeah, but that's one of our, being rude. <laughs> that's one of our healthy communication tactics. Would you call, I would call that health. I mean, it might, you might be saying it because of an unhealthy. It is just communication, really. But it is communication. Like when, when we're not able, when we just know this isn't going to go well, we just simply tell each other, Hey, I don't have a capacity for that. And then the other person knows, shut up. Don't bring it up. Yeah, It's a nice way to say shut up. (laughs) Yeah. 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 On on both ways. But, um, okay. What else happened this summer? Yeah. Well, I just, hold on. Look at this, look at this table. I'm like so (laughs) stoked. We get to use this table again. And sitting in storage for a year. Yeah, it's been sitting in storage for like sure two years. Sure, it'd be nice to have a kitchen but... table too. Yeah, I know. The next build. Yeah, the next table build. Uh, this is still the one of my most. Hobby. This is one of my most engaged with pieces of content I've ever done is building this table. Mm-hmm. This has been it, like I still have more people. All of your build. All my builds. Yeah, like that's kind of knife. That's kind of a little table. S- a little sweet spot of mine, maybe, but. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, what else happened this summer? Um, we, Ember Girl turned seven, which was crazy. Um, in this past month, the month of September was wild for us because we started homeschool again. Uh, Ember is in first grade this year and she turned seven right before school started. My brother got married, which was big. All the kids were in the wedding. So ring bears, flower girl, Jared yep. and I are in the wedding, which <laughs> was crazy. <laughs> Just if you have ever had a family member get married and you yourself have young children, like it is a crazy experience. And yeah. we could not have done the day without our friend, Jamie Herb, who was the wife of the person who married my brother yeah. and my sister-in-law, my now sister-in-law, uh, because she helped us a lot. And even she was just saying like when she was in her sister's wedding, it was so crazy. Like it just is a crazy thing to be when you have like lots of little kids. Cause it's, the whole day before the wedding and then the day of the wedding, you have family in town, it's you have all these people you want yeah. to keep up with and then you've got to like keep your kids quiet and fed and kind of behind the scenes, but then they have to look cute. You don't want stuff to get all over the outfits. And then yeah. of course, like Bodhi has the one tearful moment of the entire day, like right before the bride is going to start walking yeah. down the aisle and he's by himself with the bride. Jared and I are already standing up there. I'm like, good oh, Lord. <laughs> Anyways, it's just crazy, but... We but got through that. We, that was crazy. And we set some, and, yeah. go ahead. We set some good expectations, I would say. For the wedding specifically? Yeah. yeah. And that's actually one thing that I would say during all the chaos and the wedding and the moving back in and, you know, adding the fourth kid and trying to figure out the work dynamic and we lost childcare. So we literally have all the kids and we're homeschooling and then trying to figure out work. I would say one of the things that we have actually done um, which believe it or not, we actually don't do a good job at a lot of things. But one of the things that I feel believe like it or not. has helped, well, some, you know, the internet is Very it's like believable. you post your highlights and all this stuff, but, um, expectation management, which we talk about, we have talked about in the past a lot. You're saying that's what we are bad at. Or no, that's something that at? we did pretty good at. I yeah. would say this summer or the, for the wedding. And I like, as you went through that list, I'm thinking we pretty much laid out like when things didn't go well, it was already. You're gonna hear Mira. Yeah, you're gonna hear Mirabella's <laughs> right off camera here. Sleeping. Sleeping. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, when when things didn't go well, it was like not that it was expected, but um, we had like mentally prepared or told each other what our expectations were. Pretty yeah. good, right? Would mm -hmm. you disagree? Yeah, you're saying for the summer in, t in its entirety. Or this the wedding summer, for sure. The, the wedding is included in the summer yeah. like this entire summer mm -hmm. it was absolute chaos and like and you know we harp on it or we have harped on it in the past but all i'm saying is expectation management is such a like critical mm -hmm. useful practical way to um stay connected like yeah or do the hard things well definitely is really what is all i'm saying and it's just something to remind ourselves and everyone like practice expectation management if, if, if you don't mm -hmm. which is really just like communicating which is something that we're obviously Huge, like super yeah. big proponents of but and not just with each other in our marriage but like with our yeah. kids it's one of our family values like we're just very big proponents of communicating and over communicating I think it goes all the way back to even when Jeremy and I were dating long distance like I think that's part of the reason why we've been passionate about it slash good at it is because we had to learn to be like super good over communicators totally when that's all we could do like literally our relationship was communicating over the phone as before even facetime existed so you didn't even get that like emotional cue you know yeah. um anyways but yeah so september was crazy uh a lot of people ask us like uh i thought i'd just like share this real quick on the podcast just the homeschooling thing we get so many questions about the homeschooling thing yeah and um that is a big obviously like thing um that we've committed to do for specifically ember because she's she'll be in first grade this year and we're doing the same thing that we did last year which is this little like homeschool um well i'm homeschooling her and then she goes to like a pod like small group pod two days a week so she still gets that like classroom environment it's like 12 13 kids they have a hired teacher um and so she has the two days there and then the two days at home we don't really do too much on fridays because uh we just don't really need to because first grade and yeah. then bodhi actually does go to a little preschool a couple days a week couple hours really sh short 
Um, but same thing that we did with Ember and we like just adore the school and yeah. same, like love same preschool I went to just giving them the exam the environment of being able to like be around those kids and the teachers are so amazing and sweet so a lot of you guys ask like well, why is Ember homeschooled and not Bodhi well Bodhi is still four um, yeah. and it's not like one of those pre preschools where he's like in school all day every day it's just very short um, minimal days a week but uh, we just have loved the school and have it, I think it's set our kids really well up for then going into kindergarten and it gives us also a little bit of time in that window uh, where if we can get child care it's only for two of the four kids yeah. while some are in school so just trying to make all the moving things work but that's just a little bit of an explanation on that because we do get a lot of questions about that but yeah it's a, it's crazy for us right now we're going through the process of trying to hire someone part-time for child care just like a couple of days a week because we lost that we had someone for two days a week um and we lost that over the course of the summer yeah. after having mira gained a child and Which so is, it's just a lot yeah well that's trying added, to work and that's added quite a logistical uh yeah. you know and this is the thing with anyone thinking about doing homeschool like it's a we are we are we've become and are becoming I would say pretty big proponents of it. We love it. Like we love getting that time back. And again, mm -hmm. I'll, we'll talk later in this, ep which we'll explain or share a little bit about what we think the season is going to look like here in a minute. But um, programming, talk a lot about programming. But like we love getting that ability back. And um, mm -hmm. that being said, it adds quite the logistical. Like you kind of have to have. A framework in order to plug or be able to do homeschool well and I think honestly we are lacking a little bit in that frame like we're trying to figure out that framework yeah for a lot of people with maybe more um, traditional um, jobs and home structure you know he or she might go to work all day and one stays home she stays home with the kids and Ours stay at home mom fluid yeah. where homeschooling is kind of just like adding it like you're plugging in that to uh to a structure that supports it ours is not it's a little bit more complicated and so mm -hmm. we've just been so collaborative in so many things and mm -hmm. and um so yeah it's, it's been a logistical lift i would say so anyone yeah. thinking about homeschooling like make sure for me it's been a logistical <laughs> yeah for you because <laughs> i'm the one that's doing it especially so, that portion of the yeah the yeah yeah but i would say just for anybody that like is because we we started last season of the podcast talking a little bit about homeschool Aww. there's the girl pull this open Um, we started last season of the podcast talking a little bit about homeschool too. We shared that mm -hmm. in the last, and I think after having been through our first year of homeschool, one thing that I have learned is that like nobody really knows what they're doing and everybody is changing what they're doing all the time. Yeah. And I think this, th that there is a perception when it comes to homeschool that these homeschool moms have it all figured out and they have all these curriculums and books and things that they do and they're changing and researching and adapting every year just like you are. You don't need to feel like you're the only one that's figuring it out. Literally anyone in that I know that homeschools their kids, even if they have like five or six kids and have been doing it for 10 years, like they're still figuring it out. And they're, yeah. they're asking me like, <laughs> what resources have you found? And I'm only one year in, you know? And I think that that's, that's just a good reminder for, for anyone that's starting homeschooling, anyone that's considering homeschooling and the people that are doing it and still feel like they haven't had it figured out. Because I think from the beginning, when I said that I was going to do this, I said like, it may look different every year. We may do a different curriculum every year. We may do this, you know, pod learning thing. We mm -hmm. may not do this pod learning thing. We may eventually put our kids in s the school system. Like, I don't know what it's going to look like forever right now. We're kind of taking it year by year and yeah. kid by kid. And I think that that's really important. And I think that a lot of people don't talk about that enough, that they are doing that too. That like yeah. a lot of families have this blended situation where some are homeschooled, some aren't. Some, they're, some are doing different curriculums or part of different groups. So one year they're doing classical education, the next year they're doing Waldorf and Montessori or the next year, you know, like it just changes. And I think it should. And I, I'm saying that as just like an encouragement to anybody that's starting. 
Yeah, like um, so often we want myself. We want to start things with the end in mind, or start things yeah, having totally knowing how to do it. And mm -hmm. part of homeschooling, what you're basically the point you're making is you have to start knowing you don't know anything, and everything will change. Yeah, and only with that mindset can you kind of successfully roll it out. Totally. Right? Yeah, that's good. <clears throat> anyway, so that's enough about homeschooling, but. Um, well, how, I mean, last thing about homeschooling, how is it like, what's the, what's our next change then, you know, going off of that, like, what do you think our next change is or how are we going to make this more efficient? Um, uh, I that. think just for us, like, well, I think so far this year, the biggest obstacle is just like not having a dedicated time to work and trying to fit in work in all of these different margins. If we had a dedicated time to work, then the homeschool time could just stay more set. But because it's like, oh, randomly we have one of our moms that's able to watch our kids on a yeah. morning on a Wednesday. Well, like let's push homeschool to the afternoon that day. Yeah. That's kind of, I feel like one of the issues. But um, I think for me, like one of the things that I really try to focus on with homeschool are just with, learning and teaching our kids in general is like we want our kids to love learning that's yeah, like a big totally. thing for us we want them one of our family values is wonder and learning we want our kids to just like have a, a big sense of wonder and to love to learn and one of the things that i that i do feel like i do a good job of and is really important to me and i really want to do when it comes to like our kids education is reading with them out loud like read alouds and i think that that is yeah. something that i try to do a little bit in our homeschooling every day too so it can be something that ember looks forward to whether it's one of the stories that we're doing or um a chapter book that we're reading now ember can read herself so obviously we do a lot of like she reads and, and but like not not me stopping reading just because she's reading but continuing to read to the kids totally all of them and i feel like that's something that is really important to me that i want to keep doing reading out loud with them and it's something that I feel like I was able to do this summer, even in the midst of chaos of like having another baby. Like I know there's this picture I, I was telling you about this on one of our date nights. Like one of the first pictures of me with all of the four kids is like them all on my bed. And I think I had mastitis and like you took a picture on the digital camera and I'm reading to and them. Reading it's to like them, yeah. the thing that I can do. I feel like it's just the thing that I can commit to and do. It's not complicated. Pick up a book and they all want to sit there totally. and read with me. We can do it, you know, outside on the hammock or in our in my bed, like wherever it makes sense at the time. And it's just an important thing. And I I've seen lots of like um, interviews with like homeschool moms, like seasoned homeschool moms or listen to podcasts about that, where a lot of them that are like veteran homeschool moms say what's one thing they wish they did more of or one thing they're glad they did. And it's always reading, reading yeah, and and reading out loud, not like having your kids read to you but like continuing to read out loud to them I think it's super important so that's one thing that I feel like in the midst of the chaos of however school looks this year that's one thing that we can fit into our life whenever it doesn't have to totally. be in my one hour set aside time of homeschooling Ember it can be really anytime um yeah I, I feel like yeah for this us, did not need to become a homeschool podcast no, by the way yeah, we not at all I just <laughs> Totally. I just thought I'd end the po the maybe the homeschool thing with that one question because we talked about changing. And I was like, in my brain, I was like, oh, what are we kind of leaning towards or changing or adjusting right now? But yeah, readings. readings I also big. think we didn't all well, just maybe we can talk more about this in a future episode. But the uh, classical education style, I, yeah. you and I have been a lot more drawn to. Yeah, yeah. Which, which we didn't know as much about when we started homeschooling. Well, and, and people look at us and they go, really? Like you guys are into and. And we're like, that's why. That's why. <laughs> that's why yeah. we're into it is because we need that we for need the balance. The structure. We kind of know yeah. our kids need that. At least we sense that they may. Yeah, because we can. So I think that's something we like. Make. Part of our family, well, our our family. What do you call it? Not it's because it's not identity, but um, our family mojo or whatever the word is is um, we can tend to be very uh unstructured, like on, and this is why we are drawn to things Wild. like like reading and and mm. these these things that add like rhythm and intentionality and structure we need to add as many of those back in and this is yeah. why we're drawn to um the classical style yeah. of, i think but anyways yeah you're right we'll talk about that more later for we sure. should we should while we're on that of the topics but, of things we'll talk about more later we should just i was give just a, gonna say let's give a yeah. little some flavor what so, the season's gonna yeah, look so like what, what other things we're gonna talk about this season totally so i we're gonna continue very much on um the home health and holiness uh um uh what a track or whatever and uh we're gonna talk i'm 
we're going to talk a lot about spirituality and a lot about how in just physical health and the connection between the two and how health and holiness, I believe, are intrinsically tied together. And I think that's, yeah, just the holistic nature of it all, the mind, Mm -hmm. body, spirit connection, um, because we've siloed them Mm -hmm. to the degree that we've completely forgotten their synergistic, synergetic reality. And Mm -hmm. so that's of extreme interest to us. And um, there's, there's things in that that have, uh, have, Comp- have profoundly influenced our life mm-hmm. and uh, our walk with the Lord and our health, our health and the way we think about our health. kids' health. Yep, all of it. So we're gonna we're gonna follow on that track. So we're gonna talk a lot about some science stuff. We're gonna hopefully get some people on the podcast to have mm-hmm. the, some of those discussions with. Yeah, I'm just gonna say maybe some more interviews this season with yeah. some experts in that space because we know we know a little bit about a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and then we'll do an episode on uh, Ma- home birth, Mirabelle's, Mirabella's birth, because yeah. that's been highly requested. We haven't done that yet. And we'll try to We're get in- an actual YouTube video up. So this podcast is going to be hosted on the Jeremy and Audrey Roloff YouTube channel under the podcast uh, folder or whatever. Um, but we're going to try to get the home birth and the house tour mm-hmm. up as just videos, which again... Per the first 10 minutes of this podcast, it's been really hard to kind of find the work moment to do that, to even film it. It's just mm-hmm. like it's not happening. So, um, but yeah, we're going to we're going to try to get that up really soon because, again, people ask about it all the time. And it's it's just uh, it's been something lingering in our in our, on our to do list, I guess. Mm-hmm. But um, what else are we going to talk about? Um, Being married for 10 years. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. We're going to talk a little bit more about homeopathy. That's something that's come up a lot um, yep. and just other alternative uh, remedies for healing, treating, <laughs> taking yep. care of our family. Um, light and like you've been talking, some of the stuff that we've been talking about a lot on social media, really like gut brain access, gut brain connection stuff. Yeah. And, um, just how to our journey with that and kind of the importance of focusing on that yeah um what else i think that's that's pretty i mean that's so there's so much life with four kids life with four kids some of our like new family rhythms now being back in our house now that we've changed like physically our house i think some of our rhythms inevitably will change just because like literally the layout of our house is different and we kind of intentionally did it that way and i think we're going to see some of that unfold this fall and winter as we spend more time in our house because over the summer we kind of live outside so um i think just talking a little bit more about that yeah so yeah so it'll be uh it'll be a good season and of course whatever you guys want us to dive more into because we always are listening to your guys's feedback on things so yeah q a episode or two is always fun Mm -hmm. i like those you know i like when we go live i just feel like the engagement with with people is so fun and part of me has always thought like why don't we just turn a live episode like go live and like just talk with people and then that could be an episode a podcast episode Mm -hmm. that i've always said we should do that but now that now that we're on video it would be easy to throw it up on the mm-hmm. screen here and, and do it. But, um, yeah. You guys let us know if we should do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so also just real quick, some a housekeeping thing. While, since we're on YouTube now and this is on video there and you are listening to this, Audrey already said, like you can now watch it on YouTube, but it's going to mean that a lot of the, the links, the resources and the, um, you know, that's all going to now be in the YouTube description. So it's going to be a whole no- podcast. It'll be in both. Yeah, and it'll be on podcasts. That's what I'm saying. But um, it's just, it's an avenue people aren't used to, uh, you know. Totally. Finding for with us. But Mm -hmm. anyways. Yeah. Um, How would you say that the adjustment has been to four kids? I feel like that's been a big question too, like throughout this summer. Now that Mira's four months old, almost four months old. I would say the biggest adjustment um, has been... uh, not it hasn't necessarily been adding mira it's been losing a few things like losing you know um um child care help and i think adding mira made up made me realize ha- just how um unstructured our our work life balance is mm-hmm. which you know it's 
we had a good rhythm, I think, with three kids. But now that we have Mira, it's like, oh, now we've got, you know, for a few months, we had seven, we had four kids under seven. And it was like, oh, okay, this is all, there's not 10 minutes without somebody needing something. We literally can't work all day. Mm -hmm. And then we have to wake up and decide who's going to go work and who's going to do this. And then there's homeschool. And so the adjustment to four kids, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been a lot. But I think losing the losing those two days a week where we can mm -hmm. just crush work. That we can rely on. That we can now rely we're like on. staying up late or getting up early. Or it's identified <laughs> structure. There's other things to do up late and up yeah. early too. <laughs> structure is so, so important. And mm -hmm. so we are now scrambling to rebuild a framework or a structure that we can rely on to do the things because you can't really pull it's like yeah it's just the foundation it's like we don't know when we can work if we don't have a mm -hmm. foundation of or we don't know when we can do homeschool this or that and so yeah. then everything clashes into one another and there's no there's no time blocks which My by the way I, I bought a that i bought that pad. you what my nursing pad is just oh. sticking up my i bought nursing pads the um it's the most used and highly rated or something time management tool by like millionaires or something like that and it's a it's everyone should know about it but it's just block it's called time blocks i think it is and the so I, yeah the, yeah so our now our to-do list is literally you cannot write something to do unless you've assigned it a time a block i already had one of those you just wrote your own version of it i use the jess macy whatever where it blocks it and it breaks it down by 30 minute increments which i think is better than your yours what only breaks mine? down by an hour mine's like it starts at 5 5 30 yeah, 6 yeah, yeah. 6 30 is it 7, i thought mine was 7, better well anyways you it, fill it all in then you have a side list where you yeah and i know i need it because i look at it jeremy can't prioritize and it stresses me out just looking at it, i'm like i gotta sign up a time to this and yeah. so I honestly think we're both ADHD probably, but just. yeah. So already there's like, it's identifying a lot of, uh, you know, flaws really like just in the, in the way we, we roll with some things. So, yeah. um, that'd be my answer, which is a long one, and, but <laughs> that'd be help. That's something that's helped you. Your answer to what? How has it been adjusting to four kids? Oh yeah. Um, I think super grateful. One of the things that I prayed for was that Mira would be a good sleeper. And like that has been honestly yeah. like game changing. Also, like my postpartum this time around has been the most energy by far that I've ever had postpartum. Yeah, I think so. I think there's a few things that connect to that. I think having a baby at the beginning of the summer, late spring was also a big one. We've never had that. All of our babies. Yeah, you had like winter. the summer. So like to, to be able to like hold a newborn in the summer on our deck outside, like it was so cool. And our kids to all just be like playing outside all day instead of cooped up inside where I have to come up with activities for them. And they're making messes of the craft room, just explosion. Yeah. You know, it can be an explosion outside where the mess is outside and I can like not have to be cleaning up the house every single yeah. day with the newborn. Like that was nice like i will say that was a huge like, which yeah cool there, thing there's no summer, there's no shortage of explosions outside right now on the property like i feel like i'm in the middle of 30 unfinished projects and yeah i still stand by though like our adjustment of two, from two kids to three kids was much wilder than from three to four i feel like we're already chaotic yeah chaotic well, and that, it's like that's now kinda, that you had four it's like and she's an easy baby so it's just been yeah. not yeah that's kind of that's kind of what i said three, too really? right yeah yeah like the adjustment has actually been what we've lost and the realization of mm -hmm. how important structure is um, more so than adding a fourth kid and, uh, you know, another mouth to feed and all those things. Those have, totally. That's kind of all just fell into place mm -hmm. is my thought. But uh, today's episode is brought to you by Element, our go-to for staying hydrated. So there's a growing body of research that suggests that the daily gram intake of sodium is actually two to three times what the government currently recommends. So instead of 2.3 grams for optimal health, we should actually be having four to six grams for optimal hydration and human health and performance. And so we have been adding these to our waters for about a year, and it is essential for us with all the projects and activities and everything we have going on to compound what we do. So instead of just drinking water, why not add one of these and boom, we've just multiplied our, our energy, our output. And now we're staying hydrated. Now we're getting our daily salt intake, uh, based on, you know, what it should be. And so we love these things. I love the watermelon mix. I've been putting this in my water. They also have these, um, uh, sparkling electrolyte waters. These are a real treat. They pretty much replaced all anything else I drink during the day. I just drink these now. So those are great as well. No sugar, no caffeine. Um, no nonsense ingredients. So Element's been a game changer for us. We love it. We add it to our water every single day. 
And uh, for our listeners, they, we've got an exclusive offer. If you go to drink element, which is L M N T dot com backslash roll off you can get a free element sample pack with your order this is also totally risk-free if you don't love it they will 100 percent refund your purchase no questions asked so again go to drink element that's l-m-n-t dot com backslash roll off give it a try we love it we know you will too okay one thing that's super exciting that was inspired kind of in the springtime uh, for us, but is something that we're really excited to share with you guys today is a new product that we have, um, but there's a backstory to it. So I wanna tell you a little bit of the backstory of like why we did this. It's very different from any of the other products that we have, books and journals. Yeah. It's kind of a new thing and it's meant to be fun. So Jeremy and I took a little trip. We actually went on- This is one of our secret summer trips that- It was actually spring, but- it's, yeah, spring trips that nobody <laughs> nobody knew the timing about. Of things. Uh, we went on a, like a little mini baby moon before Mira was born. Yeah, and left the kids for a couple of days, and it was like, it was honestly like so. We were, it was probably like one of the hardest times in our marriage because it was. I would say it was one really? of the hardest times in our marriage well, for me. It yeah, was. Maybe why? I would What's feel the... that more than you. Give me some more um, context here. We what were living with about? my parents. We were oh, renovating our house. Yeah. We never saw each other because Jeremy would go. We would work. We would do homeschool kids. I was super pregnant, living with my parents. I was up. And then Jeremy like would go work on the house really midnight, late and then really yeah. early in the morning. We never had any time together. Our child care, again, was still inconsistent. It was just like really intense. And just all of the like hiccups and things that came up with the house, not just the financial burden of it, but like all the things that went wrong and how long it was dragged out. And then the the element of drama on top of that of the impending due date for me and the yeah. baby and wanting to be in the house for, in time for the baby to be born and nesting and all that. So it was just crazy. And anyways, we decided let's go away for a couple of days to Palm Springs and uh, leave our other three kids. And we honestly had no right doing that. Like no. it was chaos. Uh, but we were like, let's just do this. Let's log off. We didn't. Yeah. And we logged off from social media for those. And we days. said, you know, one and of the agendas of the trip was to communicate and just to come. Like, let's just like let's we needed some time like just us to talk because about. it's impossible to do this means we really need to do it. And so yeah. We, exactly. we we did it and um we printed you know obviously one of the ways we believe is like just really healthy and fun and easy communication is questions we're big into questions if you can't tell and uh, we we think they um they just unlock these layers to a relationship and communication and in the brain that um other tactics and tools aren't able to do questions mm -hmm. are and it forces a, a listening posture as much as a communi communication posture and it's mm -hmm. just they're awesome so we printed a bunch off like lists of questions or whatever and uh we had we just had so much fun we for like three hours on one of the nights we're just like asking questions and we were telling stories that we had never told and we've been married for 10 years one another yeah at and that point almost like 10 years. they were just uncovering these like layers at, oh my goodness i remember this blah 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 blah. and a lot of the questions were funny i think you and i are really good about asking like the serious questions and like yeah. even like we've shared on podcasts before in the past or even in our books like we share a lot of questions creative love the book is basically a book of questions yeah but we've talked about like you know the 36 questions that lead to love that new york times yeah. article where it's like broken down into like levels of seriousness and depth of the questions that you ask that totally then like lead not to all love the questions are serious but there's they get progressively, they get progressively more progressively. serious yeah yeah but like some of the questions that we were asking on this trip were like more lighthearted and funny but they they prompted us to tell stories instead of just like answer the questions seriously yeah. like think it definitely about something and I think the storytelling as the storytelling aspect of those questions was what was fun for us totally because and we we're in an environment where like we weren't around our kids we weren't around our house remodel we weren't around my parents love them bless them it was a great season living with them but like we were alone for a moment just us without tiny humans or older humans and and so like I feel like a lot of the walls came down we were able to like just be present and have fun for a moment which was really good and yep. we asked all these questions like, what, I don't, can't even remember off the top of my head. One, um, certain ones that we spent like a really long time on. Like, yeah, um, I don't know. Let's let's cut. So we had so much fun. We were like, 
we, we, we got to make this into something. Yeah, we said like, we this need is a, something that's needed because we needed it. <laughs> yep, we needed it. And it was such a revival for us and and just reinforced the question ask, asking aspect. And so we made it. Introducing <laughs> Connect Cards Couples Edition. So, so it's 100 questions to help you connect yeah um, 100 questions it's kind to, of, to deepen and strengthen your relationship and it's they're supposed to be fun so you can honestly play this as like a game don't think of it as like the marriage journal type questions like yeah there is serious questions in there that are like similar to the questions in the marriage journal or whatever yeah but this, this a lot is, of it's meant to be something that like you could in theory like i think that night when jeremy and i were asking questions we probably asked what 50 in one night oh audrey we yeah Totally. And, and, there's and it's just like if you're here. not feeling one of the questions, you just put it in the back Toss of the out, deck. Toss it out because there's 100. So it comes in this beautiful. We and it's fun. Like it's. Yeah. We designed this whole box that it comes in. Show the box. I'll show and the And it sits, sits in there. But. Um, Should we draw a mystery card and ask it? Yeah. We're just going to. Yeah. Draw one. Uh, well, the first one. Well, let's just show. Is yeah, this sure. actually what we the haven't first one is? The order these. in the box? I kind of forget the order. Yeah. Ask it. What's the first one? We came up with all these questions too, by the way. They're not like the corny. <laughs> this is a dumb question for us. But <laughs> really? Okay. They're not the corny, cheesy ones sometimes that you can get. like this, And that's what I'm saying. We maybe asked 50, but we went through because we printed off hundreds. Some of them were just really bad. You know what I mean? So we really tried to make these. Like, let's try to make every question awesome. You know? So there's, there's as minimal waste as possible. But there okay. will always be This some. one is, what is one way you think we could best combine our skills to start a business together? Oh, that, yeah. So <laughs> so for people we that... We already do that. For so. people that don't work together, that, next. that would be a real... Yeah. So next, <laughs> is there something you feel like you're supposed to do, but you haven't? Mm. Like, that's a super good question. Do you know your answer? Um... Yeah, you do. Well, yeah. There's you know your answer to that. Yeah, probably. Why? Do you think you know it for me? Yeah, but I'm not going to answer for you. Well, I've heard you tell me that before a million times. So, What would that be? What do you think it no, would be? No, you got to answer for yourself. You always do this. Well, you we can have a podcast you, about this. You do this. You when think, our, whenever we hang out with friends and stuff and like someone asks you a serious question like that, <laughs> I like know what your answer would be or I, I like know you better than you know, know yourself. And then you don't, you're like, well, what is it? What do you mean? What well, do you think? I'm like, just answer it for yourself. Well, there's there's a few. Oh, I got to go deep for a moment. Unlock your emotions. Roll-offs don't do that. Yeah, roll-offs don't do that. Um, no, Unless we do, you married we, into the roll-off We do family. do that, and we're learning how to do that, but it's, it's difficult. Um, is there something you feel like you're supposed to do, but you haven't? Um, maybe I have some stage fright. Uh, because I'm having trouble recalling what it what a, like an honest answer would be. Um, well, I think you feel like you're supposed to write a book, but you haven't. You your own book about some things yeah. that you're really passionate about. Yeah, I mean that's one, I guess. Yeah. What? Uh, I guess. Yeah, but that's not play that off. That's like not that's like you know. I feel like I I do feel like there's a book coming, and it's but I'm I'm in the what, what's the famous what's the quote that. Um, uh, who said it? Um, oh, uh, who's the philosopher? You're bad about this. No, no, no. I, no, no, I have it. In you got to move on. No, it's <laughs> it take uh, too long to get to it. I'm trying to, my brain is filing through the Rolodex here. Um, <laughs> uh, Nietzsche, I think. Or no. Uh, it doesn't matter who it is. Just oh, it doesn't matter who it is. is. Anyways, it's um, uh, your life really only starts at, your life really starts at 40. Everything before then is research. And I'm and I'm very much feel like yeah that makes that I'm tracking with that. Okay, another one though I feel like for you is going to seminary. Oh yeah, yeah, getting some like proper no? yes. Once again, you're playing these off as like not G getting I some feel like proper education. Uh, not and not I, proper education, more just because you've desired to like yeah to, go to, through that process. So really, just go through the educational process of learning. Um, I think you'll do that. Would be. At some point. I think would be beneficial to all the research I do and all the reading I do. I don't, I have never really been trained in how to do that. It's always, it's just, I'm became deeply passionate in spirituality and science and the overlap. 
And so I'm just like diving head in, but nobody taught me how to swim kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And now I'm approaching it too from like most people only swim how they were taught and they have to go through the process of unlearning the mm -hmm. rules in order to break them, in order to swim mm -hmm. properly, I would say. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you can't, uh, nobody's going to teach you how to overthrow them is another famous quote. And it's like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like some people only learn and read according to their training. Mm. And so there's this freedom in never being trained, but also at the same time, I, it's a both and thing. It's always a both and thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was a great babe. Thanks. Should we do one more? Are you going to ask me mine? Oh, this one. See, the, you didn't there's a couple. Mine. Oh, what's, uh, <laughs> is there something you feel like you're supposed to do, but you haven't? have another baby oh babe you gotta <laughs> chill out this is this is video podcast situation what are you talking about um you just had a baby <laughs> i just that's something i feel like maybe i don't know i think we gotta i think you i think you gotta we gotta let's process a little bit <laughs> Ooh, this is good. Like, and this one might be a little bit more on the serious side. How did your family handle conflict growing up? Mm -hmm. um, that's, I mean, that's, think of, that's really good. Like our families handled conflict. There could not be more opposites. Yeah, your family didn't handle it. We didn't handle it. We simply didn't handle it. That doesn't mean you didn't have it. No, and your family would be. <laughs> that just means you chose to ignore it. Totally, and not handle totally. It. We didn't handle My it. My family is super confrontational. Oh yeah, they'll they'll say it across the table and spend the whole and dinner. loud and loud. Yeah, which 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 you guys ironed it out. But also, there's times yeah, where I'm and like, and we're also still super this might have been better because we actually communicate. Yeah, this might have been better said elsewhere. Sometimes I'm, and then what do they say? Like I just disappear sometimes. Like sometimes her family will be going through your like whole a family does that. You, a, I know what Jacob, I'm saying is your mom Jack. one time sat me aside and was like, Jer, you're a part of this family now. You wasn't this your mom? And what? she said, yeah. And she's like, you can't just walk away when was um, she joking around with you. No, she was dead serious. And she's like, you don't need to walk away when we're processing something. Oh, that's you funny. can. I didn't know she that. said, you can join us. You're a part of this family. And I remember. I remember being like, oh, wow, thanks, Cindy. <laughs> but I have a great relationship with my mother-in-law. Yeah, Cindy, your BFF. Um, just oh, get some, throw some more out. We don't need to an answer, but just give them a flavor. Yeah, one of like, our absolute favorites. What is a dream craving desire that's been a forefront of your mind? If our income doubled today, but we had to give away half of it, what or who would you want to give it to? Mm. It's pretty good. What is a new friendship that you are most excited about right now? Mm-hmm. I love that question. That's what? that question's in one of like the birthday questions that we ask yeah. each other every year. Yeah, yeah. On our birthdays, we say like, "Who's what's a relationship that you've invested in this year? Or, like what? a new friendship that you've are most excited about?" It couldn't. It doesn't mean that you have to have met them this year, but I love asking people that question on their birthdays because it's totally. just like it gives you a flavor for like what their year was like. Because usually, whoever they made friends with, it maybe was at like a place that was significant to them that year, or a job change that was significant, or a new like yeah. A, school that they've changed here or whatever you know yeah so anyways. uh two more questions and we're gonna wrap it up what is a new hobby that you wish you had time for mm -hmm. well the okay i remembered one of the ones that we loved from when we were on our palm springs secret adventure was like what if you were to get arrested for something what would it be or remember that oh yeah yeah it yeah if you were to get arrested for something what would it yeah, be? yeah we have Wasn't one that it? we have one kind of like that in here and what what, what did i say Remember we you I guessed what you would say and you were like yeah that would be the only thing I'd ever get arrested for. I don't like remember like being a I jerk mean. to the police officer or something like. No. What was it? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't remember that? We have a minute, babe. <laughs> um, this is a go. And what is something you want to prior prioritize more in our relationship? What is something? These are really good. What is something you respect or admire about other? Thank you. About other couples? Yeah, Audrey did a lot of the heavy lifting here. Um. As you guys know, what we, would you like to have accomplished five years from now? What's something you have been wanting to budget or save for? Yeah. I feel like that. Uh, what's something you think holds me back? So that's a good one. Let's let's answer that one. What's something that you think holds me back? Holds you back? Mm -hmm. um, I know yours. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. What is it? Of course. Um, my greatest fear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what other people think of you? Yeah. yeah. Which is a lie 
from the enemy mm -hmm. and something I had to figure out. Something your your parents should help you figure out later in life is the the great lie that you will believe or you you will falsely live under for a lot of your life and it steals your identity it steals so much potential and it robs you of joy mm -hmm. if you believe the lie that obviously is set up and and ha and um uh you know by the enemy by to to just rob you to steal your vitality to keep you from becoming who god made you into be so for my for me this falls largely into like how I grew up and all and mm -hmm. being on camera and, and the, the rise of, of social media and the internet and all this other stuff um, is the great, my great lie was I am what other people think about me. Mm -hmm. And when I said that for the first time, I remember just like bawling because it's, it's the truth. That is the lie. And once I saw it face to face, there was light on it. And obviously light exposes the dark. So once it was exposed mm -hmm. and it was the deepest lie mm -hmm. that goes uncovered and undiscovered for so many people, they like live and die under this lie that's robbing them of life. Um, you, you just know it. You know it when you when you find it and then you can start to unravel it and untie that knot. That's usually deeply and this is why you get pain someplace. This is like it's so tied to the spiritual health and the physical okay. health. No, aspect. That's another episode. The whole thing. What's something so, you think holds me back? Um, time. No. Uh, <laughs> honestly, though. Uh, what's something that I think holds you back? Um, quite honestly, time. Like that's. Mm -hmm. It's just like if you were a Wonder Woman, like you could do so much. You could literally do anything and everything. I'm so glad you're <laughs> on my team. If you had time, it, which again, your time go. Uh, and I, I say this for everything, like being a mom. Being yeah. like you, uh, it's just amazing what you would be able to do if all your time went to being a mom. It's just, in, I couldn't imagine where you'd be work-wise if, if you know, all your time would go to that. You, yeah. So. It's kind of a cop out, but. Yeah. Well, it's just, fine. some people, okay. some people don't, wouldn't use their time. Anyways, all that to say, connect cards. As of today, first episode of These Are The Days podcast, these are 20. available. They are 20% off only for the next two days. 48 hours. So for the next two days, today and tomorrow. From airing, from this episode airing, 48 hours. 40, or for 20% off. Not 40% yeah. Off. Um, and they're super fun. This would be a great gift to give this Christmas to couples, friends, whatever. Um, they're that, just yeah. cute. Fun, and as you guys know, like we don't release engaging. products. We don't release products very often. That we don't use. Or we fall under the... Ourselves. The, the good but also not so good uh, umbrella of like if something changes our life and we love it and we think it's amazing we're gonna make it and we're gonna share it and and uh, and, we did. and we did and it's what we do and we did great. this and it was we like this is an incredible experience that we wish more people more and we've couples. shared it with a lot of people this summer that have really yeah, loved love it, it too and we've like asked them the questions and stuff. And so anyways, for the next two days, you can get it for 20% off. It's a really great gift. You get it at beating50percent.com, which is where you can get all of our books and journals. Yep. Everything is there. We will also link the connect cards in the show notes on YouTube and on the podcast so you can easily find it. Just whatever your app you're listening to on right now, just scroll up into your show notes and you can see it right there. Grab a pack for 20% off today and you are done shopping for your spouse this Christmas. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's an incredible. Or stocking stuff. And so this is whatever. the couple's edition, which obviously means we have some exciting plans in the future. Mm -hmm. um, as think? we've been exploring these with our giveaway, giveaway. At, at dinner time with the, with the kids, we've been just, it's been fun. But um, we want to do other editions. So. We are very excited to be back. Thanks everyone for the support and the DMs and the messages and the people we see on the street and at the store that come up and say, when are you bringing your podcast back? It's still... For the people now that say, these are the days. Remember, because there's yeah. all people to say like when they see us instead of being like, yeah, say, not knowing what to say and then messaging us say, later on Instagram and being like, I saw you at Halvation Market. Just say, these are the days and then we know you know. These and truly... It's just like, we can say it back to you. These truly are the days. I, so many of our listeners and now watchers, wow. Yeah, thanks for watching if They're, you're watching on Yeah, YouTube. but you're in the same season of life of us. And if there's one thing, a lot of what we talk about and do, we want to convey and get across is like, these are the days, so don't miss it. You are right now. You are right here. <laughs> so take the next best step. And uh, we're just super excited to be in your ear and now on your screen, you know. Uh, a part of the conversation in your life. Thanks for listening, you guys.
We'll see you next week.